made by me in my media interview on 23rd of uh, August this year that while forward guidance can be a useful policy instrument in an accommodative monetary policy phase or in an accommodative monetary policy cycle, it can be quite difficult to provide such, it, you know, such forward guidance in a coherent and consistent manner, especially when we are in a tightening cycle. The difficulty gets further compounded in the current environment of extremely high uncertainty. Such forward guidance may even have destabilizing effects. On financial markets, especially if the subsequent tensions are at variance with the earlier pronouncements. Volatility, especially in times such as now, when global tensions and synchronized monetary policy tightening come together, Overshooting often precedes subsequent realignment with the underlying fundamentals. So there are expectations build up and markets tend to overshoot and then subsequently when the central bank policy actions are different or when there is greater realization of the actual state or the actual uh, macroeconomic fundamentals, then of course the necessary correction takes place. So overshooting often happens in such uh, uh, difficult and such complex uh, times. Hence it is useful to take stock of India's macroeconomic fundamentals and its buffers and assess them in the current and evolving conditions. I would like to highlight f six points in this regard. First, India is widely perceived to be among the fastest growing major economies in the world in 2022, when the other major economies may actually be encountering recession or considerable moderation in their growth momentum. The favorable growth differential of India provides confidence reflected in the surge of portfolio inflows into India since June eased the terms of trade shock that India faced in the aftermath of the pandemic and the war in Europe. With the consequent easing of imported inflation pressures, India's C per barrel has turned out to be lower than what we had assumed for the full year. As you know, for the full year in our monetary policy, we have assumed 105 US dollars per barrel, and the average that we saw, the monthly average in uh, August was 97.4 uh, dollars per uh, barrel, and so therefore, that is another positive factor to be noticed. And uh, in fact, India's inflation is currently lower than the number of partners. Third, the shift in the commodity price outlook is also altering the assessment of India's current account deficit in 2022-23, that is in the current year, 
which is now expected to remain well within sustainable levels. Fourth, at a time when food security is threatened the world over by shortage domestic supply and assure food security in the domestic market and in the domestic uh, segment. Fifth, India's foreign exchange reserves of US dollar 561 billion as on August 26, that is the last published figure. It provides a cushion against external shocks as is being demonstrated on a day-to-day -day basis. Moreover, the reserves are also reinforced by forward assets. Sixth, the health of our banking system is sound. It is well capitalized and well provisioned with improved asset quality. This constitutes a key pillar of financial stability and is expected to provide positive spillovers to the, for the financial markets. So as you can see, if we are talking of the buffers or if we are talking of the firewalls which you know, protect our economy or which add resilience to our economy, we have a six-sided uh, buffer or a six-sided resilience built around the Indian economy and I think these are positives which every financial market uh, participant, uh, I think uh, it's, I, I would feel that it is necessary to keep in mind. Now, reflecting these fundamental factors, the Indian rupee has moved in an orderly manner.